Miners to save nearly two billion in taxes. Man charged for punching Corp in the face. EPA renews lease the phase one permit. And we got all this oil and still no petroleum regulator. I am the Rick Corporal Ford, and this is Uncut News. To see news happening, send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Yesterday, Jogdio announced his government's intention to remove over $1.9 billion in taxes from the mining sector. He explained that the government will reduce the final tax applied to miners' income, withdraw the current 10% tributors tax, and the 14% VAT charged on lubricants. He also promised that some $2.4 billion will be spent on upgrading roads in the mining areas. The Housing Ministry has recently published an invitation for bids for the construction of a 3.5-mile four-lane road connecting Schoonard on the West Bank to Crane on the West Coast. The job will be split into eight lots that will be constructed simultaneously. Once the contract is signed, the construction is expected to take 16 months, in time for the completion of the new Demerara Harbor Bridge. Yesterday, family members paid their last respects to the three children who died in last Wednesday's house fire in Makabakda. Eight-year-old Timothy Kippens, six-year-old Tristan Kippens, and one-year-old Zalia Flew were laid to rest following a funeral at Lycan Funeral Home. The mother of the children, Tracy Flew, was still clearly devastated by the tragedy and broke down in tears repeatedly. Sensing the depth of the tragedy, the government and the opposition sent representatives to comfort the grieving mother and her family. This is heartbreaking to say the least. On Wednesday, Sion Prince was sentenced to 10 months in prison for punching a cop in the face during an arrest in Plaisance on the East Coast. He admitted to assaulting Police Sergeant Maxwell on Tuesday, May the 31st. Prince is known to the police as well as Sergeant Maxwell. According to reports, Maxwell was arresting Prince after he was accused of property damage. But during the arrest, Prince punched Maxwell in the face, causing the sergeant to fall to the ground, a scene that was widely circulated on social media. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's Car of the Week. Currently on sale is his 2016 Suzuki Jimmy Sierra four-wheel drive. It comes with regular and low-range four-wheel drive, Bluetooth, mark rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, bark camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $3.4 million. I'll pay as low as $700,000 down with around $67,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171, Biroshi, Queenstown, or Lot 2, Lamar Street, and tell them you sent you for this sweet deal. Investigators are searching for Clarence Farley, the husband of murdered New Central High School teacher Omega Alt. He is currently on the run, as he is the prime suspect in the woman's murder. The man's car was found abandoned at a lumber yard on the East Bank. He was last seen on last Monday when he took the couple's baby to one of the dead woman's sisters and told her that he was taking up a job in the interior. A refusal to sell eggs to two passing travelers ended in a gunfight on Tuesday night. The incident occurred at a shop in Swan Village, Suzdike Linden Highway. According to the police, the 64-year-old farmer had just closed up his shop when two men came looking to buy some eggs, to which the old man refused, as he was already closed for the night. But instead of moving on to the next shop, one of the suspects whipped out a pistol and fired a single shot to the farmer, who reportedly returned fire with his illegally owned shotgun. However, the suspects managed to escape. Despite the growing popularity of hookahs and e-cigarettes, the health ministry does not intend to penalize those who import and sell the largely unregulated products. While focus has been directed on cutting down the number of people engaged in traditional smoking, Dr. Anthony said that instead of cracking down on their importation, sale, and use, the health ministry has opted to engage in a public awareness campaign against tobacco altogether. Though hookah bars operate in contravention of the Tobacco Control Act of 2017, the government has no immediate plans to crack down on them either. For the best crotch in Guyana, wait, that should read, for all size of clutch disc and pressure plates for heavy duty trucks in Guyana, check out Powered Automotive. Get this and other high quality truck parts at the lowest prices. Visit them at lot 1161 EE Eccles. Or call them on telephone number 69701711. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy duty truck parts store in Guyana. GWI is currently facing the possibility of a $19 million counterclaim from a contractor, Arkisoon Contracting. 
In 2018, GWI sued the contractor for $1.4 million. They claimed that Arkisoon had breached the contract and had outstanding deliveries from 2017. However, GWI lost the case in court, and while the $19 million counterclaim for the contractor has not made its way to court yet, GWI said efforts to settle the matter out of court have also not been successful. In November 2017, the company was contracted to build the extension of distribution of the coastal network from Baidobo to Agatash in Bartica, Region 7. However, it was found that although the entire contract sum of $9.2 million was paid to the contractor and works were successfully completed, the contractor was indebted to GWI for $1.4 million. But after GWI lost this case in court, the contractor claims that they are now owned $19 million for downtime and additional work done with GWI since. Now for today's world update. The EPA has renewed the environmental permit for the Lisa Phase 1 project for another five years, effectively sealing any chance for renegotiation until 2027. According to the EPA, the oil giant submitted its renewal application six months ago, but they decided to approve it only hours before the May 31st deadline. In the renewed permit, routine flaring and venting is prohibited, except during commissioning, startup, and special circumstances, whatever they may be. They have also raised the fine for flaring to $50 US per ton of CO2 instead of the previous $30. Now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? The fact that we still don't have an independent petroleum oversight commission to regulate the oil and gas industry. Yes, I know I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating until it's actually done. A proper regulating organization could spell the difference between success and complete devastation for Guyana. I mean, this is not to be overstated. This has been a complete failure on both the PPP and the PNC, as neither formed one in the seven years since we discovered oil. Now, I don't need to explain any more, as I've already made my argument before. So this is where you come into the equation. If you are watching this, you should be protesting right now. If you can't do it physically, then be vocal online. This government actually follows social media very closely. And if anything, they hate embarrassment, especially online. So tell everyone about this issue and demand action. Tell the government they're either going to efficiently and effectively manage our nation's patrimony, or come 2025, we'll vote in someone else who would do the job. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff Security Service. Sheriff Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, canine services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest, now hire the best. Hire Sheriff Security Service today. Now for our uncut news, views poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. Yesterday's question was, the government is doing another one-off relief grant, this time for the fishing industry. Do you support this move, or should they find other ways to give citizens relief? Buxton Spice says, it's difficult to have a position on giving fishermen or any profession a relief grant. On one hand, being against it labels you as someone who doesn't care for others. But on the other hand, these relief grants are always abused. All of a sudden, everyone's a fisherman or farmer. What happens in three months? Do you give them another grant? The government only knows quick and easy solutions. And unfortunately, these quick and easy solutions may just lead to inflation. Roger Wilson has a similar line of thinking, saying that he doesn't believe the cash grants are the answer. The price for goods are up. While a cash grant is good for this month, what happens next month? Increase salaries instead. It'll put more money in people's hands. That way, you'll have more accountability over how the money's spent. Indeed, I agree. Willow Darrow says that they hope the Fisher Folks grant, handout, or whatever they call it, goes to the deserving individuals. They also wonder if this is another way the government or the ministers are saying that the oil operation is affecting the Fisher Folks. Or are they just buying votes for the next election? Yes, I believe all of those are within the realm of possibility, but it behooves us to ask these questions nonetheless. RC View Farm says, The Ministry of Housing should create a rent-to-own plan for persons who can't afford the $5 million mortgage. They would be in contract with the government to pay the same amount or less they are currently paying, but a portion of the rent goes towards a down payment to eventually purchase the home for a fair price agreed upon. Honestly, that sounds like an infuriatingly simple solution. Infuriating because it's so simple and yet no one has ever thought of doing that here. It would literally change thousands of lives.
And finally, Dion Ryan Singh asked about my position about the oil industry, saying that Canada produces oil and refines, and they still pay market price for fuel. So how can you say that? Well, Dion Ryan, Canada pays market price because it is a net importer of oil. For example, in 2019 alone, Canada spent 18.9 billion Canadian dollars to import foreign oil at a rate of more than 660,000 barrels per day. Now, if you want to know why the oil is so expensive right now, Putin and his war is not to blame. It's actually the oil companies that are taking advantage of this situation. So, if we're the source of our own oil, we already cut out a good 40% of the cost of production right there. So, before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a top up vendor quickly and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685 3109 for more info. Now, for tonight's question. Tomorrow actually marks the two-year anniversary of Uncut News. Yay! I know, it's amazing, right? So, with that in mind, I want to know, what would you like to see changed around here? Should we add a segment? Should we take away a segment? Or do you like everything as it is? I want you to think about that question. Tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. And if it's really good, we might actually incorporate it from now on. But until then, I'm Noriko Bullford saying goodnight, folks.